If you have any information that may aid in the identification of this decedent, you may contact the Sligo Garda station by telephone at 353-7191-57000. You may also find a link to an email address at www.garda.ie forward slash en forward slash contact dash us forward slash station dash directory forward slash sligo dot html. On the 16th of June 2009, at about 6.45am, a man and his son found the body of a man lying face down, washed up on the shore at the Rosses Point Beach in County Sligo, Ireland. The man initially thought it was a mannequin, but upon further inspection, he discovered it was a human body. He and his son reportedly recited the Lord's Prayer for the deceased man, and then called the guardie. At 8.10am, the man was officially pronounced dead, and the undertakers collected the body at 8.20am to bring it to the morgue. The man's personal belongings were scattered along the beach, and no identification was found among them. The medical examiner determined that there were no signs of foul play. He'd been dead for less than 24 hours. His cause of death was an acute cardiac arrest, and he was in bad health at the time of his death. He had terminal prostate cancer, bone tumours, previous heart attacks, and one of his kidneys had been removed. These conditions would have caused him significant pain, but despite this, the toxicology report revealed that there was absolutely no type of medication in his system at the time of his death. The pathologist also found no evidence to suggest that he had ever sought treatment for his cancer, and determined that he would have had weeks to live at most. The man was also a heavy smoker and had recently lost weight. Though I could not find any official ruling on the manner of his death, it is widely believed to have been a suicide. The man was Caucasian and thought to be in his late 50s or early 60s. He stood at about 5 feet 10 inches tall, with a thin build, short grey hair, blue eyes, a tan complexion, a clean-shaven face and a well-groomed appearance, and frequent and extensive dental care, having several bridges, root canals, crowns, a gold tooth at the upper right side of his mouth, and a small silver filling on the lower left tooth. He was found wearing a navy tank top, purple swimming trunks, black underpants, and a Q&Q brand wristwatch. Several of the man's other personal items were found along the beach near his body. These items were a CNA brand black leather jacket, a sleeveless Tommy Hilfiger brand black jumper, CNA brand size 50 blue trousers, a Key West USA brand black leather belt which had been manufactured in Italy, blue socks, Thin Comfort brand size 44 black leather shoes which had been manufactured in Germany, a packet of tissues with the words soft and sicher printed on it, some cash, 140 euros in notes and 9 euros in coins, several sheets of blank paper, an envelope, Hansaplast brand plasters, 55 milligrams of aspirin tablets made by Bayer, which had been manufactured in the Czech Republic and distributed in Germany, and an unopened bar of soap which was printed with mild soap hotel care. This type of soap was not stocked in or made by any hotels in Ireland. Also of note, the tags had been cut out of the clothes he was found wearing. A post-mortem image of the man is available, which I will show on screen in just a moment. This image may be disturbing to some, but is for identification purposes only. If you are sensitive to seeing images of a deceased person's body, you may want to look away now. The post-mortem image has now been replaced. Following the news of his death, it was discovered that the man had been seen alive several times. The first known sighting of him was on the 12th of June, where he was seen at the Ulster Bus Depot in Derry, Northern Ireland, between 2.30pm and 4pm. At 4pm, he got on a bus with a black shoulder bag and another black luggage bag in his possession. He asked the driver if the bus went to Sligo, to which the driver responded negatively, as the bus went to Galway. 
The driver pointed the Sligo bus out to the man, and then the man left to go get on that bus. He arrived at Sligo station at 6.28am, and then got in a taxi and asked for a cheap place to stay. The driver first drove the man to the Krishkinlan guest house, but it was full. So he next drove the man to the Sligo City Hotel. The hotel had vacancies, and the man checked into the hotel at 6.52pm using the name Peter Bergman and asked for three nights which cost 65 euros per night, which he then paid for in cash. It was noted that he had a thick German or Austrian accent, but he spoke good English, and he listed his address as Einstetterson 15, 4472, Vienna, Austria. He was not asked to provide any ID. The name he provided turned out to be false, and the address he gave did not exist. During his stay in room 705 of the hotel, he was captured on CCTV cameras leaving the hotel with a full purple plastic bag. It is presumed that the items in the bag were personal effects that he was throwing away, as when he returned to the hotel, he wasn't carrying anything. It is unknown whether he was using the same bag that he simply put into a pocket on his way back to the hotel, or if he was keeping a stash of multiple identical purple plastic bags in his hotel room. He was seen leaving the hotel with a purple plastic bag 13 different times. Although he was never actually captured on CCTV throwing the items away, he was simply seen walking with the bag, having used the blind spots in the CCTV to his advantage. The next day, on the 13th of June, at 10.49am, he was again captured on CCTV walking to the post office. There, he purchased eight 82 cent stamps and airmail stickers paying with a 20 euro note and being given 11 euros and 80 cents in change. Authorities were unable to locate any letters that he may have written or sent. Later that day, when a staff member knocked on the door of his room so she could clean it, she got no answer. When she opened the door, the man was inside and the staff member recalls him standing in the doorway looking very startled. Her exact words were, quote, it was nearly like I had caught him doing something that he shouldn't have been, or I caught him off guard, unquote. She got the impression that he was relieved when he realised it was just a member of staff and not someone else. Between 11 and 11.30am the next day on the 14th, he left his hotel room and approached a taxi. He pointed to the Strand Hill area on a map he was holding and asked the taxi driver for recommendations for a nice quiet beach where he could go swimming. The taxi driver responded by recommending Ross's point and proceeded to drive the man there. The driver said that the man was rather chatty and he asked if there were buses to Ross's point and the driver told him that there were. The driver described him as a pleasant man with gold teeth who was well dressed but not carrying any bags. When they arrived at the beach, the man got out of the taxi and had a short look around before getting back into the taxi. He was dropped off in the same taxi at the bus station, having paid the taxi driver with a brand new 20 euro note. Again, the taxi driver said that the man had a heavy German or Austrian accent, and also said that at one point the man had said he was from Austria. The next morning, the 15th, the man asked for a late checkout at the front desk, and mentioned that he had some errands to run. After that, he left the hotel with his purple plastic bag. Later that day, at around 1pm, he checked out of his hotel room and returned his room key. He left the building in possession of a black shoulder bag, a purple plastic bag and a black luggage bag. He proceeded to walk to the Quayside shopping centre. At the shopping centre, he was seen on CCTV standing in the doorway for a number of minutes, presumably waiting for something. At 1.16pm, he left the shopping centre and headed for the bus station. During the journey there, he disposed of the black hold-all bag, as when he arrived at the bus station, he only had the other two bags with him. At the bus station, at 1.38pm, he ordered a cappuccino and a ham and cheese toasty. While eating, he took paper and a pen out of his pocket and began writing notes. After reading all the notes he'd written, he tore them up and threw them in the bin. Authorities were unable to retrieve these notes, as the bin had been emptied several times by the time they viewed the CCTV footage. After that, he asked the depot inspector about which bay the Rosses Point bus was to depart from. 
The depot inspector described him as, quote, a wee bit uptight and a bit worried looking and stressed looking, unquote, and also said that he had a German or Dutch accent. The unidentified man boarded the bus that headed for Ross's point at either 2.20 or 2.40 p.m., and the bus driver remembered him asking for a single, no-return ticket to Ross's point. When he arrived at Ross's point, he was seen pacing along the beach by several people, who said that he was greeting passers-by whilst he was holding a newspaper under his arm. Some who saw him say that he looked out of place. At about 9.30pm, he was seen paddling ankle-deep in the water with his trousers rolled up to his knees and his hands clasped behind his back. One of the two people who saw him described him as seen in quote, as if he was in another world, unquote. The two spectators said that he was walking along a beam of sunlight in the water. Between 10.30 and 11pm that night, a man and his girlfriend saw the unidentified man walking down the ramp to the beach. They greeted him and he nodded back to them without saying anything. At 11.10pm, he was seen sitting on a bench at the beach in possession of a purple plastic bag. At 11.50pm, he was seen again, walking along the edge of the oncoming ocean, carrying a plastic bag. That was the last time he was seen, until 6.45 the following morning, when his lifeless body was discovered washed up on the same beach. Authorities were unable to locate anyone in mainland Europe, North America and South America with the name Peter Bergman, who fit the correct age range, or who was missing or otherwise unaccounted for. Authorities searched bins throughout Sligo for the contents of the man's purple plastic bag. They searched rubbish bins, public areas, gardens, private properties, underground car parks, charity shops, lost and found property, bus stations and the local dump, but they found nothing they could link to the unidentified man. Facial recognition checks were run to see if Peter Bergman had come to Ireland through the UK, but no trace of him was ever found at any British airport. After a five-month investigation was unable to determine his true identity, Peter Bergman was buried in a Christian ceremony in an unmarked grave in Sligo Cemetery, his funeral attended by four guardi, the undertaker and the grave digger. The plot in which he was buried was specifically for unidentified bodies, and at the time of Peter Bergman's burial, one other unidentified decedent was buried there. In 2015, it was reported that the Irish authorities had never even contacted the Austrian authorities about the unidentified man. There is also no Interpol notice for the man, as he does not fall into the categories of missing or wanted. The case will remain open until the day that Peter Bergman is identified, if that day ever comes. Because of the lack of an Irish database for unidentified remains, it is not possible to see who has been ruled out as being this decedent. His fingerprints, DNA and dentals are available. If you believe you have any information that may aid in the identification of Peter Bergman, the appropriate agency for you to contact is listed at the beginning of this video.